I'm Don Reed uh, with Saltwater Fly Tires. Uh, today we're going to uh, tie the, the game changer. Uh, I think I've uh, pretty much have figured out uh, how this fly is actually tied. So we're going to give a little more detail than you can get on the, the other uh, videos on the internet. We'll see how it goes. In the video on, on uh, line, they don't really show how the tail is made. And I think the tail is really important on how this fly swims. So um, I think I have it figured out. We're going to uh, use a little bit of um, fish hair uh, material to create uh, the tail. Uh, we'll shape it. We'll uh, finish it off with the, uh, we'll make it hold its shape using a little bit of silicone. Um, and then we'll wrap the uh, CCT uh, body fur over the top of that and I believe that's the way that the fly was made so um, without further ado we're going to get started on that we're using uh, Flyman's articulation shanks um, the, uh, we're using they have uh, three sizes uh, the smallest being a little tiny half inch thing uh, the next one is about an inch and a quarter right, these are really hard for you to see I know but um, and then the longest is about um, an inch and three quarters two inches um, and it will get attached to the main hook shank. Now, that's the way that this fly was designed to begin with. I'm not saying it's the best way, but that's the way it's designed. So we're going to tie it that way. All right. First thing, we'll clamp the, uh, the short section that gets the tail on it. We're going to clamp that into the vise so that we can work with it. We're going to use white thread, or actually we'll use this gray thread that I already have out here. Uh, we're using gray um, uh, CCT body fur because it's available and it actually represents the fly or represents a fish uh, species much better, especially for Northeast Florida, which uh, we're using, uh, using it for a mullet pattern here. So we're going to put a, a thread base down to begin with and get this thing, get the, um, get the shank covered, keeping it in the vise. Then we're going to tie in a clump of this fish hair. Now this stuff is really kind of difficult to work with. It's so fine. But we're going to, uh, let's see, that should be a good plenty. Here again, using synthetics, use a, uh, a pair of shears that are for utility purposes because plastics really take a toll on your tools. They really will dull them up. So this pair of scissors I use all the time for for this purpose. All right. This clump I'm going to tie around. I'm going to actually spin it sort of around the entire hook shank so that I get a, a good um, spread on it. We're going to take it out after we tie on the CCT body fur and um, we'll shape the tail at that point. So, let's see if that's going to fan out. That will fan out, I believe. So let's, um, let's cement that down real good. Probably use too much of this stuff, but you know, more is better than not enough. Still using uh, clear cure goo uh, hydro. I really have gotten to where I like this stuff for quick set cement. This is not going anywhere at this point. And that's one thing that you have to worry about with this fish hair is it's really slippery and it will come out from under your, your wraps if you're not careful. But not once you set it with this stuff, it's there for the duration. All right, now we're going to wrap in some of the body fur. I won't take much on this particular piece because it's so short. But here again, need to find the grain on this stuff. There is a particular grain to it. Wrap the tag in, in real good so you get a good pinch on it. And then wrap up back behind the, the eye. All right, around, around. Around. 
this is a full body uh, fly, so we are making it as full as we possibly can. All right, this is working pretty well. We're going to get to the eye. And then tie it off. Stuff is a little difficult to work with sometimes. All right, you get two two good wraps in on it, you've got it pinched. All right, and then trim it off. Don't get your thread. All right, pull that back and tie it off. Here I'm going to use a one-hand whip finish. You can use a whip finisher, this works fine. This will do the job in a, in a hurry. Okay, so now trim that off and we've got some work to do on this. Got to try to shape this into a, a flat tail. So keeping the, the eye oriented properly, and we'll shape all this stuff down to it after we get it in there. But right now we need to get the, uh, we're going to use the uh, silicone, it's a fresh tube, so we should be in good shape with that. This stuff comes off a little better if you wet your fingers. Or if you use um, material like PhotoFlow, PhotoFlow will keep this stuff from sticking to you. All right, here we go. I'm going to get it on there and then shape it really quickly the way that I want it. In a hurry. Don't want to overwork this stuff. It really, it gets messy. All right. Now all we've got to do is let that set up and get it off of our hand. Here again, it works better if you do have um, a little bit of water nearby or a. Um, something like the photo flow. It doesn't take long for it to set up. So I'm going to just lay it here for a second and see how that goes and get this stuff off of me. All right, this, um, I, in the interim that we were out uh, while I was working this, this stuff down, it takes a little patience to work with the silicone, but you know, once you get it down, you can taper it, you can, you can use it to shape things uh, really well. Um, and it holds the shape for pretty much forever. So I've gone ahead and cut out a little fishtail um, pattern already for this one. As you can see, I hope you can see that against the, the blue. But uh, at any rate, we're going to go on to the next step and uh, try to um, uh, finish the fly up. So here we go. We're going to put the, the medium shank uh, portion on the, let's see if I can get it in here. Okay, there we go. So now we've got something to hold on to and work with. We've got the neck shank on. We're going to try to keep our little buddy back here out of the way. And we don't really have much of a way to do that, so we're just going to have to watch out for him. Um, here again, we're going to use the uh, gray um, Danville's Flat A uh, tying thread. Works better than anything else that I know of for tying big flies like this. So real strong. I mean you can use big fly thread and stuff like that and it all works out real well. I've um, used all of them and I just keep coming back to the old standard, uh, the flat A. Um, I like it because it does flatten out. Um, if you unwind it a little bit it'll lay down just as flat as floss. So at any rate, try to keep that out of the way back there and 
cover the shank. I like a covered shank. I think I've mentioned that before in other videos, but if not, then I could reiterate that. I do like to have a little something for the materials to have a tooth for. In other words, they have something that they can get a purchase with, uh, and it uh, keeps them from spinning around and around. At any rate, so we're going to go ahead and tie this, the next course in. Here again, trying to find that grain and get a good pinch on the tip and tie it down real good and wind back out to the end point. It's a good idea to put a touch of um, um, Dave's flex cement on at this point just to be sure that your wraps hold up real well. I just I tend to overdo glue cements in general, but I've always used Dave's to good effect. All right, now we're going to just gingerly wrap this around this particular portion of the shank. It's the second space second piece and since we're tying this full we're wrapping fairly close together one wrap right in front of the other instead of spacing them out for a more sparse fly here we're going to trim this real thin you know real close so uh, it's probably important to tie this tight here I'm using my everybody needs one brush this helps to keep everything from matting up as we go along. Easier to fix it now than it is later. Keep wrapping. Here again, brush it out. This is a little dog brush like brush that is called an indicator brush. Uh, but it works really well for managing uh, materials like this and any other fur or um, synthetic material that you're wrapping on either a wire or palmering in any way. Palmering meaning you know, going around and around the shank as you would with a feather. This is really going to be a full fly. A lot of trimming afterwards. Shaping is really important with this particular fly. This is not a fast fly to tie. So just be patient. You can probably pick up some speed with experience with this. Just keep going. out to the tie out point which with material this long you can always cover with your next course on the next shank all right trim this off using your plastic scissors careful not to get your thread lay this down you're going to need it again tie this off like we did previous time. Tie it off. I tend to use a one hand whip finish. It's easier for me. I've been doing it for so long that it's just a real easy. I'll show that on another video at some point. But you can use a standard um, um, whip finisher like this. A particular item. If you're tying small flies, this really comes in handy because it's easy to get to those those tight eyes. But in this particular case, they're easy to, to hit. So one hand works for me. Okay, here again, we're going to use the uh, clear cure goo to um, finish this little knot off. This is a just a real good definitive way. <laughs> Finishing that off, making sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Let that work its way around. As soon as you hit it with a light, it's fixed. All right. 
Yep. So now we've got the two sections together. This one is we'll comb it all out so that it stands out. I'm gonna lay it aside for a minute and work on the next section. Doesn't look like a fly yet. Doesn't look much like a fly yet, but it will. It's hanging there. All right. Now this particular part of the fly is built on a hook shank. And here I'm using a 34011 Mustad, uh, an old-fashioned uh, hook, sprope bin, long shank, 3x long. Okay, but we're going to use that um, in building out the last section. Now, uh, it shows in the video online, it shows this being tied in over the top. So basically that's where we're going to go with it. We'll give you a little extra length of your fly anyhow. I'm just going to cover the shank all the way back to the tie-in point. We'll start back here at the back. So, I'm going to overlap it a little bit so that we have a good, nice length there. You can see about how much I'm overlapping. And I'm just going to wrap that right in on top of the finished hook shank. This is going to be the only hook in this fly. So, let's wrap on up so that we can get some control on it, and then we'll wrap it down real good and tight, cement it in. All right. I would wrap this about three or four courses. Just to be sure that you have some bulk on there to keep this thing from breaking loose in the middle of a fight. Although there's not gonna be a lot of stress on the tail of this fly. All right, so I'm gonna wrap back up to the eye of the hook to get it out of the way. Here again, clear cure goo. This is the Hydro. Really works well in this application. Coat that real well. Coat it all the way underneath. On top. A little goes a long way. And then hit it with a light. Okay. Should do it. Yep, nice and dry. So, at this point, I'm going to just temporarily tie off the uh, thread because we've got to connect the other part together, and then we'll put it back in the vise and re reattach. So, remove the this portion of the program from the hook. Uh, from the vise. This is, um, you can see this detail. It's just wrapped in real nice and snug. Here we're going to go back to clipping the two together and keeping this part out of the way, the finished part that we, we've already worked on. I'm going to try to set it back and keep it out of the way there. All right, we're going to clamp the um, the uh, shank rather than the hook into the uh, into the vise. This will give us ability to wrap this thing uh, well, and then we'll always we can once we get to the bend of the hook, and we want a little more stability because we're going to need it. This thing is a little loose. We'll um, we'll move it back into the we'll change the hook shank into the vise. So this wrap this closed real well. And keep that out of the way. The work you've already done.
cover this thing with a little bit of thread again for so that your materials will have some purchase. Hope when I say purchase, you understand what I mean. It just gives the um, material some texture to cling to. It keeps it from spinning. If you put some cement into this, it'll help to hold both pieces together, both all the way down to the shank. All right, and I think I will use a little bit of Dave's flex cement on that. Now we're going to tie back in. You can see this thing unwinding. It has a natural tendency to unwind to a flat state. All right, we're going to tie this in over the rear loop. Tie it in real good. Get a good eighth of an inch at least, and tie it in real good and solid, soaking it down into that flex cement. It won't go anywhere on you that way. I'm going to work all the way back up to just behind the end of the hook because that's where we're going to change the position of the um, place where we're holding the device. All right, come on, get back there. All right, over. And over. This small gauge wire doesn't hold real well in the vise at this point, and I didn't really want to adjust the vise back and forth too much. It holds it, but you just have to be careful with it. And you'll figure that part out as you go along. Still wrapping this very tight. One wrap right in front of the next, or right in front of the previous at least. to change the um, position in the device. I'm just going to lay one wrap over this, maybe two, just to keep it from coming apart on us while we're moving. All right, that was unsuccessful. All right, go ahead and wrap your thread out to the end where you're going to finish. Uh, actually, at this point, we probably should put an eye in. Now, I know in the other video they show glued-on eyes, but I'm really dubious that that's going to hold on. So I'm going to tie these um, eyes in in a traditional method. Um, I'm in, this is a brass eye with real eyes you know, cemented in and with a coat of uh, hydro over the top of that. So we're going to set these eyes on the bottom so that the hook point rides down and then come around. These are heavy eyes so I tend to over wrap them a little bit. Continue wrapping the um, Cascade Crest um, body fur. 
this stuff is available from, from us. Uh, any dealer that uh, sells Cascade Crest materials will have this as well. It's a widely used, very versatile product that um, does really well in these kind of applications where you're you're building up a big fly, or if you want to build a fly very quickly. Unless you're building one that's six or eight inches long, it goes a lot faster. You notice I tied these eyes on the bottom of the hook shank. Well, that gives you, that controls which way the, the fly rides whether it rides up or down, it also gives it some orientation on horizontal and vertical. Around and around. Looks like I'm going to run out. I may have to tie in another piece to finish it out, but that will give you another eye at some, at another technique that you need to know. It's what to do if you get halfway through a fly and you run out of material. So, okay, great. Here we go. So we've run out of material, right? It's real easy, not, no sweat. Just snip off what's left. Could have continued to right to the end of that, but. And then we're gonna cut off one more piece. Enough to finish. Tie it in just like you did the other. Five or six, eight or nine, ten good wraps. All right, continue on. All right, we're right behind the eyes. Now, this is the place where it gets a little tricky with most of these flies that you were palmering material around because you want to cover the eyes and not mat the material down. So it's a little, little on the tricky side. Um, here I'm just going to come back over the top. Let's try that again. Go under and then over. Always be willing to change your, your plan. If you thought it was going to go one way and it didn't work out, come back with another plan. So now we're pretty much around the eyes. We're going to make a couple of good turns in front of the eyes, and that should hide any, any issues that we have created with the eyes. Stuff really wants to fight sometimes. One more good wrap and we're done. separate it as much as you can to get to the tile point. Trim off your excess without cutting a thread. Might as well cut anything that's ahead of you. Alright, pull all this back. Everything goes back. Hold it back, force it, and then with your finished wraps, 
crowd in the eye too much. Build a head. And whip finish it. Head cement, one more time with the hydros. Hydro, I keep wanting to say hydros for some reason. Do with the light. and comb it out best you can while you still have it in the vise. Careful there is a hook point in there somewhere. You don't want to find it the hard way. So now we've got a woolly worm at this point. Very woolly indeed. So what we want to do is still continue to comb all this out, make it nice and uniform. Stand it up as much as we can. Because at this point we've got to do a lot of trimming. Probably going to be a good idea to trim it from the, this is after you've got all your wraps in. This is what you come out with. So we're going to trim these, starting at the tail. Well, you just become a barber and you shape it into a fish shape. I usually like taking my time with this because you overcut it, you can't put it back on. So Cut in the back first. And then turn it over, take a look at it. Take your time. And then cut the belly. Starting at the tail. So now we have roughly two planes, top and bottom done. Let's see if we can get all this fluffed out a little bit and then we'll do the sides. All right. Cut it into a rectangle to begin with and then round off your edges the way I usually do using when I'm using um, deer hair or any, any other material that um, you have to shape like this, ram's wool, whatever. It's usually better to work from a work top to bottom and then one side and then the other and then you can make your curvatures, your roundness afterwards. That was a little close. Just a little close. Okay, so at this point, we'll stop and clean up a little bit and see where we are. Okay. Okay, need to work a little on this side now.
and it looked more like a, a fish. I'm starting to round it in. You can spend a lot of time with this, and it's probably better the first few that you tie that you do. But at this point, for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and finish the fly up. It's getting real close. There is a hook in there. So this is pretty much, you can spend more time trimming it, but this is pretty much the, the shape of the fly from head to tail. All right, now we're going to give it the stripe down its back, which will give it a little more of a fish look. You can use any kind of Sharpie you want to get a hold, any kind of Sharpie you'd like to use. And you just basically black it in real good to give it that the shoulder and, and back look that a normal natural fish would have. This material takes pen pretty well. Get each section and work it in real well. You can color these any any color you would like. You can use any of the different flavors of CCT body fur comes in 14, 15 different colors, and uh, you can use it to imitate most any kind of a bait fish like this. Uh, this one would, in our area, work real well as a mullet parent pattern, but you could use the same pattern for large brown trout. All right, a little printing. And just give you an idea what the back looks like. Tail, back, all this will blend in. Especially in the water, it'll look right. So this is the um, game changer with a little modification on the eyes. Otherwise, this is the basic pattern. Thanks for your attention.